I'm going to do is select the enlarge tool from the layer tabs at the top of the screen it's labeled zoom in and let's go ahead and enlarge the area around that one eye now we don't want to leave a trail of running stitches down to the eye so we'll go ahead and select insert trim and that's going to give us a nice trim function as we go into the eye and we'll go ahead and put in a white to begin our lockdown stitch and we'll continue that with straight running stitches white 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 there you have it so let's just move down to the bottom of the eye with a straight running stitch which is a white we'll begin our column stitch with a white we'll continue it with a blue we'll continue with the curved section of the column segment with a green and a green stitch we can continue on with another green and another green stitch now we want the segment in the middle of this eye to be straight so we'll use a blue and a blue button and I'll just come up here with a white white begin the column segment with a blue and we'll use green button green button to define the sides of the curve and we'll finish that out with another couple of green stitches there that is done all we need to do is add a simple lockdown of white, white, white buttons. Let's go up to the top of the screen to the layer tabs and we'll select the zoom to fit window tool so we can see where we're at. We could select this one eye as a block and paste it in to create the other eye but to get the experience of using curved segments I'll go ahead and digitize the other eye from scratch. So we'll go up to the top of the screen to the layer tabs uh, we'll select the enlarge tool we'll enlarge that area around the next eye and once again we don't want to leave a trail of needle down running stitches over to this eye so we'll select the insert trim button we'll have a nice trim there uh, we'll go ahead and begin with a white button and do the simple lockdown of white buttons once again we'll come down to the bottom of the eye we'll begin the curved column with a white blue green 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 once again we want the middle section to be a straight column so we'll continue with a blue button and another blue button I'll come up to the top of the eye with a white button begin the column section with a blue define the sides of the curve with a green and a green button and finish it out with two green buttons once again we're going to do that simple lockdown of white buttons white 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 so let's go up to the top of the screen to the layer tabs uh, we'll select the zoom to fit window we can see what we have so far everything looks good to me uh, we do want to digitize the mouth at this point so what I'm going to do is once again select the zoom in button enlarge the area where I am going to be working first once again I will select the insert trim button so that we have a nice trim between 
the eye and the corner of the mouth. Once again, simple lockdown. White buttons. White, 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 white. And I'm going to walk around the mouth with some running stitches before I begin digitizing the column segments that actually make up the mouth. And to travel with curved running stitches, I can use a green, a green, a green, a green, a green, and another green button. Now, to begin sewing the mouth, first I will do the corner of the mouth. I'll digitize that first. Once again, I'm going to use that zoom in tool to enlarge the particular area where I'm working. That's going to save you so much time when you're digitizing these designs if you'll just take the area where you want to do your digitizing, enlarge that just as much as you possibly can. Uh, you can always zoom back out to see how you're progressing on the overall design and it'll cut your working time down quite a bit. So let's go up to the top of the corner of the mouth with a white uh, for a straight running stitch. Uh, we'll begin digitizing uh, this corner of the mouth uh, with a white button. We'll continue with a blue button and once again to get the curved sections we'll use green buttons, green there, green there. Uh, we'll finish out that curved column section with another green and another green. We'll come down to about halfway on this corner of the mouth with a blue button and another blue button. And then we'll go down to the bottom of the corner of the mouth with some straight running stitches white buttons there. We'll begin the curved column segment with a white button. Uh, we'll continue with a blue button. Uh, to get those curved segments we'll use a green, 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 blue, and blue because we want that middle section to be straight We'll come over to the mouth itself with a white button and we'll begin digitizing the mouth itself. We begin every column segment with a white button. We continue with a blue button and then once again for those curved sections we're using green buttons. Green there, green there, and we can use the scroll bar to go ahead and maneuver to where we're going to be doing our digitizing. Uh, we finish out that curve section with a green and another green. We continue these curved column segments with green buttons. There you go, green there and green there. Let's just go ahead and move over with the scroll bar. We'll continue this curved column segment with another green, another green button, green, 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 green. green. Now another type of underlay is just to use some um, straight running stitches. Um, this area at the end of the mouth itself is going to be pulled open by the satin stitches that make up the corner of the mouth. So you can just underlay that area with some simple r straight running stitches. White, white, white and we'll begin digitizing the corner of the mouth. Now we begin every column segment with a white button. We continue that with a blue button. For those nice curved column segments 
we'll use a green button, green button, green button, green button. Uh, we want the center section of this corner of the mouth to be straight, so we'll use a blue button and a blue button. And I'll just come back up to the top of the corner of the mouth with a white button. We'll continue that curved column segment with a blue button. And to get the nice curved sides, we'll use a green button, a green button, green button, green button. And then since we're finished with the mouth now, we'll use a simple lockdown of straight running stitches or white buttons, white, white, white. Let's deselect the Digimouse so that we can do any editing that we think is necessary on this design. And let's go over to the zoom tools at the top of the screen in the layer tabs and we'll go ahead and select zoom to fit window. Looks pretty good to me. You know, if you really take your time on a design while you're digitizing it, carefully enlarging certain areas of the art, uh, laying your points in very carefully, you can reduce your editing time quite a bit. Okay, and I'll come down to the property view area and I'll just select background and I'm going to change our background color to something other than white, say gray. There, I've selected that. Okay. And I can go ahead and deselect the artwork and that way we can more clearly see the yellow that makes up the fill for this smiley face. And once again, we can just zoom into an area by going to the top of the screen to the layer tabs and selecting our zoom in tool. And say, for instance, if I wanted to move some points that's easily accomplished by floating my cursor over that point and pressing and holding down my left button till it is moved to where I need it to be. But overall, the design looks really good to me. It's a very simple design. There's not a lot to it, but we did learn a lot about how to digitize column segments and fills with curved segments. Now, some of the things that I would want you to take note of with this design are looking at how I began and ended that fill that makes up the yellow part of the design well inside the column stitch that makes up the border. That's because these fill stitches are going to run in rows and there will be some push up towards the top and the bottom of the design. So at the top and the bottom, I've gone ahead and cut that fill off well inside the border that sews over it. Now, another thing I'd like for you to make note of, the way I have overlapped the sides of that fill to where they reach out almost to the edge of the column stitch border that sews over them. I've done that on each side and that's because the thread is under tension and it's going to draw in on the edges of that fill. So it looks like we have a design that's good to go. We've got a perfectly horizontal fill stitch. This works so well when you're sewing on real soft knit fabrics. Uh, it keeps your distortion to a minimum. The short stitch length of 3.5, that keeps distortion to a minimum. Um, the density of 0.38, uh, that gives you really, really good coverage. So we have gone ahead and digitized this smiley face at about two and a half inches tall. Uh, we've used plenty of column segments to do both the fill and the satin stitches that sew on top of that fill.